Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Age of Empires 2 can be a really hard game to get into, but I'm going to make it a lot easier for you right now. This is all the information you need before hopping into Age of Empires 2 ranked multiplayer, and I hope that for all new players you can find this video and get off to a really good start in trying to learn and enjoy this game that we all love. This video is going to be targeted at three categories of people. The first one is the brand new player that just got the game. The second one is the player who plays this game casually for fun on single player with friends and whatnots, but is looking to up their game and try out some ranked and try to win some games. And then the third player is the guy who jumped into ranked right away, never got a proper setup, has graphics all over the place, and just wants to clean up his game. I'm going to help you do that for all those three categories of players. It's a very important video to watch, and I really hope that it lands into the right hands and for those that have a friend that wants to get started, make sure to recommend this video first because I'm going to make their lives a lot easier. And guys, I do a lot of coaching myself and I see a ton of new players or even beginner players on rank that have been playing for a long time, but just have the wrong graphic settings and it makes their game so much harder to play. So make sure to get onto the right uh, foot or get off to the right start, get off, whatever the saying is, uh, and, and get a good start into ranked. So. Uh, first thing I'm going to take a look at is the mods, then in-game settings, and then I'm going to talk about hotkeys before I let you guys go. So, starting off, we're going to take a look at the mods. Uh, you pretty much need to have... Sorry, what, what did I click there? Um, hold on, subscribed. Okay, we're going to go back into that. Perfect. I'm not going to click anything. Uh, first step is going to be the mods. So, um, you, you don't need the exact mods that I have, but you need similar mods to the ones I have here. So the first one is going to be a small tree mod. I use this one that makes the, the trees the same. They're all pine tree, as you can see in the top right corner here, uh, which makes it very easy, easy to see, especially with the shadow, where the trees are. It helps you wall around them. But if you don't like this one, you can grab the small tree mod right here. So you go to browse mods, small trees, and you can see this one has a lot of downloads. You can pick up improved small trees and that's going to be amazing. So uh, if you guys don't like the one I have, get this one, but make sure you get a small tree mod. It's very important. Next up, you have a no more plants mod. I recommend you just pick this up. There's a lot of useless little shrubbery around, um, around your game when it's just like the base game, no mods. And these are very confusing because they look like trees, but they're not. So it looks like you're walled, but you're not as a whole. Or, you know, the game just looks very cluttered. Get this one. It cleans up your game massively. Next up, we have the Zetness Improved Grid Mod. This is the, pretty much the best and the easiest on the eyes grid mod. Disable the in-game grid. This is much better. Uh, and then you have the better resource panel and idle villa icon. It makes your resources and your idle villages a lot more clear than the initial one. Highly recommend this one. There are other mods that do the same thing. Find one that, suits, uh, that works for you. This is the one that I use and this is the one that I recommend. Fish borders, this makes it so every fish on a water map has a small border to show you where it is, so it's easier to click it. Thank me later, this mod is insane. Uh, bigger and eye-catching relic, if you have bad eyesight like me sometimes and you skip over relics, this one can help you find those relics, which are pretty important. Uh, this is a map pack you don't need, my bad. Uh, this one is Green Arabia Minimap. If you have trouble seeing the desert minimap that sometimes you get when it's Desert Arabia, get this minimap. You can see here in the right corner, it's always a desert. In, you know, on, this, on this version of Arabia, it's always a desert. But if you have the Green Minimap, uh, Green Arabia Minimap, your minimap will always be green despite the land actually being desert. It's a huge help for me because it's hard to see gold and relics on a desert minimap, but they pop up on a green minimap. So. Shout out to Hamburgers and my mod on Twitch who made that for me. Uh, it's really important. Uh, highly recommend it. And then these two are not as important, but I still recommend them. No stumps makes it so uh, your tree line, which usually has a few stumps in it with leftover trees, you just take off those stumps. They're useless. They're extra graphics that don't matter. And they can be really confusing because you might think that you're walled, but there's actually a hole. And there's a little trump there, a stump there that you thought was a wall, but it's not. So... Yeah, just get this uh, mod, it's really good. And then no embers just makes it so after you win or you lose, they throw embers that lags your entire existence. Just get this mod and you're not going to get that lag. So we can easily jump into the next game really quickly like the gamers that we are. So uh, I recommend this one, but it's not as important, but still just pick it up. Uh, and that's not all the mods you can get, guys. Go check out the mod section and you can literally find amazing mods that can help out like this one advanced idle pointer it puts an exclamation mark over your villagers that go idle it's really helpful we already talked about the improved small trees if you want it there are a ton of mag uh, you know ton of sorry i read magna there are a ton of mods like this improved magna shot visibility which i actually want so i'm going to subscribe to it i used to have it and not anymore so i'm going to pick that up so yeah, guys make sure to scroll through the mod section and pick up mods that look good and that can help you play the game but at the very least get the mods that i have or very similar ones because it's going to help you drastically all right that's the mod section 
and we're going to go ahead now and take a look at the uh, in-game options. So for the interface, this is mainly personal preference. So for this section of the of, of the you know settings, I'm not going to force anything on you guys. Mess around with these settings. Uh, if you guys are confused about what they do, just leave a comment below. I'll help you guys out. Um, but yeah, this is very very uh, straightforward and very personal preference. It's not something that I can. Um, you know, I can tell you one is better than the other, but this is what I use. Feel free to copy if you want to, but this is where I can actually tell you what is good and what's bad. For the graphics guys, I recommend you just play with pretty much nothing on. I literally disable comp everything. Everything is disabled, gamma intensity at one, no sharpen, no bloom, no depth of field, no animate fog, and no animate fog border. Please do this. Animate fog and animate fog border makes your game so laggy, so choppy, it puts so many effects on your game that just makes it so hard to even focus on other things. If you just put it without any of these, you're gonna have a much better, um, you know, you're gonna have a much better experience with the game in general. So I highly recommend you copy this. The only thing that's up to you is if you want blood on the field. If you're you know, a little crazy like that, then you can take blood. I don't care for that. And then the zoom level is something you have to change. I am at 55. I might bump it to like 56 or 57. Uh, because that's something I've been wanting to do. So that's what I play at personally. Uh, audio, recommend you put the music volume down to zero unless you like music, that's optional. But for me, uh, I usually have it at zero. What's not optional, you have to do this, trust me. Uh, sound volume at a certain amount, voice volume less than half of that. I'm at 26 voice volume, 55% sound volume. If I want 100% sound volume, I put like 40% voice volume. Voices are super annoying and they're not needed. It's good to have them so you know that your units are responding to your commands but you don't want to have them too loud because they're very, very annoying. So you don't want to annoy yourself with random voices. You want to hear you when you're getting attacked and the important sounds of the game. The rest are pretty uh, optional. Uh, game. So for this one, it's more or less optional, but what I recommend is you villager double click. Uh, you select only idle villagers. So you don't randomly double click your entire economy when you're trying to select a villager. Health bars, I use classic. Default is nice. Always on is very ugly. I don't recommend this one. So I recommend classic or default. I recommend you take this off. This is very ugly. Um, you can have automatic farm slash fish trap rebuilding for new. So this could be good for advanced players. We probably just take that off. Uh, default aggressive student stance. That's really good. Um, so so this is good. So building range indicator. I actually recommend you say always show or show when selected. These are better options than never show. Uh, I use never show because it's uh, it's a matter of morals. I actually hate this. I think it shouldn't be in the game. It's really unfair. I use never show because I don't like how it looks and I don't think it should be part of the game. So I'm standing by that. But if you're a new player, let's be honest, you want to have any advantage you can get and you want to be able to play the game properly. So I recommend always show or show when selected. But yeah, I use this. And then, yeah, these are just up to you. And then click drag scrolling. Make sure this is disabled. You don't need this. It's make sure it's disabled. So that's pretty much the settings part of it. Uh, up here, I usually just, yeah, I just copy this. You don't need to, to really mess, it, mess around with this. Make sure this is selected though. It makes it easier to play the game. And yeah, object highlights, probably off is best, honestly. Uh, okay, next up with hotkeys. I'm not gonna go through all my hotkeys right now, but what you need to understand is that there is a ton of hotkeys that you need to go through uh, when you're playing the game. It's very overwhelming, and I don't recommend you change all your hotkeys one shot. I have a video that talks about my hotkeys on my YouTube channel that you can figure out and you can go find if you wanna copy some of them. But my advice with hotkeys is to slowly start with the default ones if you're new to the game and slowly change one or two of them to have a nice custom setup that works for you. Hotkeys are almost 100% personal preference and what I use for hotkeys might not work for someone else. But what I do recommend is that you take the time Go through what the hotkey options that you have and start using them. I'm gonna highlight certain ones that are really good. The select all hotkeys are insane. Select all stables, select all town centers, select all markets. These are really important to have uh, to be able to easily produce units. So you can click your select all stable hotkey and then you can spam your knight hotkey and that's a good way to make knights, for example. I don't use it because I use control groups, but this is better than control groups. You should definitely get in the habit of using them. So just for in general hotkeys, start with the default ones then start adapting them and make sure that you're using the good hotkeys that we have available to you. I personally use a pretty full custom setup at this point because I've been playing for 10 years and even for you, if you start playing for 10 years from now, you can easily start adapting and eventually you have a full custom setup 
if the defaults aren't working for you. But starting with the default is a good way to just learn the base game. And the last thing I'll talk about, guys, control control groups. I can't find where they are right now. Uh, yeah, control groups or group commands are pretty important. I use Alt for making my control groups, but you can start by using Control. Both of those are good options. Make sure you understand what control groups are and you know how to use them. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to help you out. So that's gonna be pretty much it. Before I end off this video, I'm gonna just show you guys how my game looks. And I'm gonna also show you guys how the game look like, it looks like if you don't use any of the settings that I have available. Okay, so if you go ahead and show you guys the game, look at this, it's so clean. Um, you have, sorry, let me move my mini map, uh, move my camera here. There we go. So you have, you know, wood at the back, very easy to see. You have the shadow there, so you know exactly where to wall. There's nothing extra on the game. Uh, it's very, everything is very visible. If I scroll over a relic, you always catch it because of the eye catching uh, mod that I have. The resource tab is very visible, very easy to see. And this is like the perfect game to have. If I show you guys the uh, setting here with the fog, look at the, how the fog looks like. This is how the game starts and it just, it just feels so much worse. The, the, the fog of war is very animated, so the game just ends up looking a lot worse and I'm just not a fan of that. Definitely recommend you just clean up the game, remove all these things and you're gonna have a much healthier experience on ranked. That's gonna be it guys, thanks for watching the video and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace, good luck out there.